Right, here we are back again for yet another video. Such a quick chilling here, so I am. Um, give me a second. Yep, that seems a bit better for this video. On the parts, I had to come back to another video, and this one is going to be about my team, Dunfermline Athletic. I'm just going to chat about them a bit because, amongst everything else that goes on in this channel, I do a lot of generic videos where I talk about Scottish football, etc. Just as a whole, a lot of other teams obviously in the last week a couple of the videos have been very Dundee United based so I'm going to now give the limelight to my own team because it is getting a bit lost that Dunfermline is my team and that I'm not just a neutral football fan and I want to kind of bring this back into the limelight because at the end of the day my bread and butter is Dunfermline and I love my club and I just want to be able to sit and talk about them for 10, 12, maybe up to 15 minutes of my life here and just kind of chat about what's happened in the season so far, the transfer window and obviously the start of the season and what I'm expecting for the rest of the season. So sit back, relax and enjoy some pars based content. What better thing could you be watching eh? So going into this summer, Dunfermline obviously had the new manager Stevie Crawford, he came in in January of this year but this was his first summer and the idea was to rebuild this squad from what it was last season, the oh, shambles that was last season and he started off pretty well, he was bringing in signings relatively quickly, obviously there was a couple of weeks at the end of the season where it was a bit dry but then once he got going, he definitely got going and he was bringing in players left, right and centre and I think we've signed around 12 to 15 players in total. So it's an impressive tally over the course of a summer transfer window. And it does show that there was a rebuilding project needing to be done at East End Park for Stevie Crawford to be able to work the way he wants to work. He's brought in a lot of young players. A lot of players that, despite the lack of experience, they do have a lot of enthusiasm. They want to play the game and want to learn. And that, I think that's exactly what Stevie Crawford, Greg Shields and Jason Dare, the management team, are really looking for. They're looking for a lot of young players to come in and really thrive on playing for Dunfermline Athletic. Bring them up in the club and just be able to soak it in and actually appreciate playing for Dunfermline again. Because last season it really didn't feel like that was the vibe. And I think that's pretty well documented now that that was the scenario last season, that there just wasn't players that were ecstatic to be playing for Dunfermline every single Saturday, there was players frustrated with being on the bench, not playing well on the pitch, just weren't they gelling well as a team etc, so that was the idea coming into this transfer window, just change it all up and bring some joy back into both the fans watching and the players playing for Dunfermline Athletic. In terms of the signings made, as I said, there's probably been about 12 to 15 signings made. Even though there's been players like Kevin Nisbet, who is obviously going to score goals throughout the season for us, and that's a vital cog. It was something that we did miss last season. Ewan Murray has proven to be a very vital part of our team, and now that he's injured, we are starting to see wee bits of weaknesses in the defence. So those two are definite honourable mentions for our best signing. But Mal favourite and I think our best signing has been Kel Turner. I just, I love everything that he kind of represents. He represents one of those players that we've brought in, one of the young players that is just going to thrive on being given the opportunity to play full-time football in the championship. Got him on a two-year deal which I just think is outstanding business. And one player that I definitely think that if not at the end of this season, that eventually we could get some transfer fee from and if we can do that that's the kind of model that Dunfermline are trying to build as well we're trying to be not entirely a selling club but at least a stepping stone for players to improve their careers and better themselves because we've obviously got our own ambitions to eventually go back up into the Premier League but if we can do that with ambitious young players and then sell them on for a fee improves the club in terms of their status within Scottish football and also improves the club financially and gets them into a better standard in that way so I'm really pleased with the majority of the signings that we've made I don't think there's really many that I don't like but as I said my favourites have got to be a top three let's say third 
Ewan Murray, second Kevin Nisbet and first Kel Turner. The loan signings that we've made, we've made Josh Coley, Anthony McDonald, Harry Cochran and Greg Kilty. And if I was to pick a favourite one out of those, I think it would have to be the last one, Greg Kilty. Because even though the Hearts players are definitely good quality, Anthony McDonald is definitely a good enough quality winger. He played for Inverness last season on loan from Hearts and did well for them. Harry Cochran is a good quality midfielder. And obviously Josh Coley's been in and around the squad for a good while now, but the one that excites me the most is Greg Kelty because I've seen him up close last season when he played for Morton against us and he actually scored the winning penalty in the 1-0 loss at East End Park against Morton. Here we go. Kelty. This season is fucking shite. So, I know exactly how impactful he was for Morton last season and Morton fans were quite gutted that they didn't get him back in some form considering he is available. So, I'm pleased with that signing and that's, out of the loan signings, that's my favourite loan signing. And then, the only other thing to talk about is possibly my kind of worry for the season and my general worry is that the players aren't going to be experienced enough to really challenge this season and we've just not got the full experience in the team that we will need to challenge at the top end. That's my main worry. I'm not saying that it's a genuine prediction from myself. I still think we could have enough to finish in the playoffs. Fourth maybe. But over the course of the season, we've seen it already. There's been weak and uh, inconsistent performances and stuff like that. So if that kind of carries on over the course of the season, we could be in a bit of trouble in terms of our placing and we might just kind of be in that mid-table bit. I know we're bottom two the now, but um, aye, that's my only worry, that we're just going to have a bit too much of inconsistent form at times and we won't finish as high up as we could on paper. And my biggest worry in terms of a player on the pitch is undoubtedly... Danny Devine. We've seen it on Saturday. He came in for one of his first games in a while and to be fair to him, that is one of his first first team games in a while but honestly, the stuff he was doing was just a bit comical at times. He got megged as well during the game. He was consistently playing the same high ball, kicking out the pitch. One time when we were attacking near the end, we were attacking, trying to at least keep the ball in play, keep it in our possession and he just headed it out of play when he could have kicked it in and it was just one of the kind of down parts of last weekend and last season he wasn't entirely trusted by the fan base either when he was playing games so that's probably my main worry in terms of a player on the pitch probably my, I don't know, just the one that I'm concerned about when he's involved in the team Sorry Danny, if you happen to ever watch this video Take it as motivation the only other thing to talk about, my predictions for the rest of the season. At the start of the season, as I said, I predicted us to finish in the playoffs and I just said there that if we don't keep up the kind of inconsistencies in our form, I still think we could finish in the kind of end of the playoffs, so maybe fourth, reaching into third perhaps. But I'm going to keep a level head and say that our peak this season could be fourth place because I just don't know if the inconsistent form that we've showed so far will be continued or not. It's yet to be seen in that regard. But I've got positive hopes for this season because the squad on paper, and I know football is not a one on paper, but the squad on paper is good enough to be challenging for the playoffs, if not making them. So I'm really keeping my fingers crossed as tight as possible that we can challenge at the top end or that sort of area this season and have a positive season because I'd love for some of the players in this squad that might move on at the end of the season I've got a feeling in the back of my mind that Tom Beadlin could move on at the end of the season for example and I want him to be part of a successful Dunfermline team whether that's promotion, whether that's the Challenge Cup I don't really care, I want us to be at least a bit successful and I don't want to be looking back on this season thinking what could have been 
and then lose players at the end of the season perhaps and then regret not being able to take advantage of having those players at your disposal at the time. But coming up this weekend is one of those competitions that I do think we have a good chance of at least being involved in the latter periods of the competition and that is the Turnix Caramel Wafer Challenge Cup. I'm going, obviously, we're going to be sitting in the main stand, there is no other stands open at East End Park except the main stand for this game. Just hold on, I need to go and get something. Well I've got these and I'll be taking these along with me. I'm going to stick one up in some area of East End Park. When the pars go up to lift the Turnix Caramel Wafer Challenge Cup, I'll be there, I'll be there. These are on sale right now. Roll advert. So you can go and pick yours up and you can get your team personalised in the bit where the pars is. So if you think, I don't know, Wraith Rovers are going to win the Turnips Canada for Challenge Cup, you can get when the Rovers or when Wraith go up to lift, whatever, yada yada yada, you get the point. So you can order them in on their website that will be linked in the description down below. And feel free to purchase anything else in the shop as well, it helps me out. So hopefully Dunfermline can get through to the next round of the Turnips Caramel Wafer Challenge Cup and, as I said, positive vibes can get back around Dunfermline because we haven't won a league game since, I think, the 3rd of March. So it's not a great look. So let's hope that we can win at least some game this weekend and then build towards the next league game against Inverness at East End Park on the 14th of September. But that's it for this video, guys. Cheers for watching. If you did enjoy it, please give it a like. Comment down below your thoughts on the pars and our season ahead. What's your predictions for us? Do you want to see us get promotion? Or do you think that a year of building will be better for us and then push on next season? Subscribe for more of this type of content. And until the next video, I'll see you then. Cheers, guys.